Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Chris, and I'm here with my co-host, JP, for another episode of The Success Agent, where we help real estate agents scale their business and not their staff through automation. And today, we're going to be talking about negotiating with your skills and not your checkbook. Um, I'm going to let JP take the lead on this one. Um, JP, why don't you just go for it? Yeah, so essentially, there's something that happens in real estate, and you get you're in a tough negotiation, you're, you're working with the buyer, you're working with the seller, you know, and you get to a, like a sticking point in the negotiations where, you know, you might be a few thousand dollars away from getting a deal done. Right. And so what happens sometimes is that the agents get a little bit overly involved as if they're doing the negotiations themselves. And mm -hmm. as put it in perspective. So I'm working with a seller. Let's say you're working with a buyer okay. and we're, the, my house has been on the market for a while. You bring me a, a buyer. We're starting to negotiate this deal. We get down to where, and let's say we're, we're overpriced a little bit. And then you bring me an offer. And <clears throat> then let's say the, uh, I think I might have lost you, bud. Then now we're trying to still try to keep this deal together. You know, we're ten or fifteen thousand dollars below the list price. You know, there might be some closing costs in there. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then now, now we're we're like, you know, as the sellers, we're like, nope, we're not going any lower. And then let's say you your buyers are like well if you can just come down to you know a couple more thousand dollars then we can put this deal together so so then what will happen is then the agents will decide to maybe cut their commission a little bit to make mm -hmm. up the difference for that two thousand dollars right so the question comes down to is are we having the tough conversations with our sellers yeah. or are we just taking the easy road and saying, well, if we just cut our commission and so we can get the deal done, because let's say there's a domino effect, there's other houses. So like the seller wants to buy now. Right. But what we don't know is if we go from the sale to the buy and let's say that buyer, that seller wants to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what are, what are our sellers and our buyers? What are they paying us for? You know, are they paying us for our skills or are they paying us our, our abilities to just work for less and less and less and less? Right. Because we're doing ourselves a disservice by resorting to just working for less rather than they're paying us for our skills. They're paying us for our ability to help them negotiate. What direction are they going in, having tough conversations and saying, what is it? What is it that you really want? Do you really want to, is it that you want to save 2000 or that you want to move on with your life? Mm -hmm. You know, house has been on the market for a while. Like we got to get real. Like we got, we need to, to come down to, is it really worth it to, um, you know, to lose a deal, if, especially if your house has been on the market and then have to pay two or three more months. Cause if you're on the market for two or three more months, you know, that little difference could be made up by selling today rather than letting sitting in on the market for two or three more months, mm -hmm. you know? So we have to, we have to, um, give ourselves as agents the respect that we deserve because we're, you know, we've been with them. We've been holding their hand. We've been having the tough conversations. We're doing the price reductions. We're doing all this stuff. And now we're getting to a point where, you know, we've got an offer on the table, like, let's just figure out how to get it done instead of me having to resort to paying you back when I haven't gotten paid yet. <laughs> you know, and this is the thing, like real estate agents don't get paid until the deal closes, you know? And so we're already providing a free service mm -hmm. up until the point where now we get to negotiate and you can see how we work. You know, you get to see how we've, you know, up to this point, we've marketed your home, we've done the open houses, we put it in the newspaper, we put it in the magazine, we've run around town, 
we're telling everybody that we see about it. We've done the Facebook ads that we've already paid for before we got paid from the deal. We're doing the videos. We've done the 3D tours. We've done all this stuff in hopes that we get it sold. We try to lay that ground found foundation up until the point of closing. And then we disrespect ourselves by saying, and then on top of that, I'm going to work for even less mm -hmm. because I know you're going to buy another house for me. Right. <laughs> even though I don't even know what house it is. And I don't even know if we're going to have to do the same thing on that one. Exactly. You know, in other industry, right? Do you say, hey, um, so, so let's say I'm a doctor, right? Yeah. You come in and you got a problem. You need some medicine, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, so, you, so, you're, so you've got extreme back pain, right? And you said, oh, you've been taking a, like a certain type of medication that really reduces the inflammation and stuff. And then I say, well, you know, in order for me to help you out, I got to give you ibuprofen instead. I know you're paying me for all my skills. I've diagnosed it that you absolutely have to have this medicine, right? But for me to help you and you help me, I got to give you ibuprofen instead because I can't, you know, I can give you my full knowledge of my skills, but I can't give you everything that you need because when it comes right down to the very end, I have to give you this other stuff, this ibuprofen, because, you know, that's where we've come into our negotiations in terms of your pain. Mm -hmm. You know, I would love to do go all the way with you, but you know, since you're not working with me, then I can't work with you. So I have to give you ibuprofen instead of the, you know, whatever it is, the Oxycontin or whatever it is, that you, uh, <laughs> you know, to take care of all of your pain, right. you know, where it should be is I really appreciate that you've worked up to this point. I really appreciate your skills and your knowledge and your abilities. I'm willing to just go ahead and let's just get this deal done. So I'm going to go ahead and pay for the Oxycontin or whatever it is that I need, the painkiller that I absolutely have to have in order to move on. Mm -hmm. Is that way the pain's gone away. I'm done with it. I can move on. You know, maybe I can go running next week now because I've gotten the stuff that I absolutely have to have. And that's kind of what, mm -hmm. where we're at with real estate, where it's like, you get up to that point where you're like, I need the stuff that I absolutely need okay, well then they just pay the two grand and let's go. Right. You know, instead of giving me ibuprofen, you right. know, because if I wanted ibuprofen, I would want ibuprofen service too. Mm -hmm. You know, no, I want the Oxycontin service. Like give me the Oxycontin service. That's what I'm paying you for. You right. know? Yeah, I think so, it's, well, it's like kind of twofold here because it, the second you start cutting your commission, that is going to lower your confidence because you've already um, submitted to the idea that you know what you're doing is not what it's not worth what you originally were going to charge. So then, like you're saying, it's a domino effect. Like, oh, they want to go buy a house now, but I already said I would cut my commission by half a percent or a whole percent, and they're just going to expect it again. And yeah, you got a double ender, kind of, but you still you can't provide the maximum service because you're not getting the maximum benefit out of it. So neither are they, you know. And there's another analogy, kind of with what you're going forth um, with a doctor's and I love this one so like you go to the dentist you got a toothache right and the dentist goes okay well that toothache is going to cost you two grand and it's going to take me 10 minutes and you're like oh man why am I going to pay you two grand for 10 minutes of your time and well you know the dentist will be like well I can make it take an hour if you want <laughs> still going to cost two grand and it's like at the end of the day you just want the product or you want the end result and you want it done as quickly as possible, as painlessly as possible, and without any repercussions afterwards. Right, yeah, because the other, the alternative is, okay, for one grand, we can just let the tooth, like, decay for a few more months. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, maybe it'll fall out on its own, Yeah. you know, or would you rather just pay the two grand and be done? You exactly. know, because for your visitation today, it's going to cost you a grand. Right. You know? So you've already paid for it, you know, and it's like, you know, so it's like, you don't want to discount your skills and abilities by just, you know, folding over and saying, you know, cause they've already agreed to pay you. They've agreed that this is the service you provide. Mm -hmm. So that really shouldn't be on the table at all. You right. know, at the well, end yeah. of the day, like they're paying for your skills and abilities at the rate that you're charging. Cause you're not going to go to, to an attorney Mm -hmm. You're not going to say, Hey, I want you to defend me in court. 
but I want you to do a really, really, really good job if you could just do it for half price. <laughs> now that we've already agreed to this other price, I want you to give me the other one for an, a, a, a cheaper price. Right. Like, they're not going to fight for you as much. No. If you're saying, hey, can we renegotiate this thing even though I, I really, really want to win, but I really, really, really want a discount. Well, if they're a good attorney, they're going to say, no, go to the guy across the street. He's half his price and has half as good of results. That's what right. you're and paying he would for. have done that at the beginning. Right. At the very, very beginning, he would have had that conversation and say, this is my price because this is the service that I provide. Uh -huh. If you want the other guy, I can give you his number. Yeah. You know, but then you're going to get the other guy's service too. Right. So why do you think um, agents default to that then? Just to cutting their, cutting their commissions or, you know, it's sometimes it's just fatigue. Yeah. You know, you know, listing fatigue. Sometimes it's, um, uh, people result to that because they're just, they, they just want to be done. Mm. You know, they just want to be done with the deal. And that's not really giving your, your client a, 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 ser a good service. Right. Actually, I'm a disservice by, because now you've mentally checked out, not only mentally, but financially, you know, and that's not the right attitude to have is just this, like, I just want to be done attitude. Mm -hmm. Like You need to be all in, you know, provide the service, show them the quality of your presentation, do the best you can uh -huh. at the rate that you've agreed to. Right. You know, it's like if you worked an hourly job and then, you know, like if you're a checker at Walmart, and then you're like, hey, I've got 17 more clients, but these last 17 of the day, I want you to do for $2 an hour. <laughs> it, would you do that? Could you just work seven, do 17 more clients for $2 an hour? Because that's, that's the only way we're going to get you out of here today. But you got to work these last two for $2 an hour. Uh -huh. That's not fair to you. It's not fair to your client because now the people going through the checkout are like, dude, what's your problem? Oh, my boss told me I got to do this one for $2 an hour. You know, and you're just like, you know, now you've done your company a disservice now, right? Because now the you've got this like very like disgruntled and displeased look on your face because now you've discounted your services. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, well, this was the rate we agreed to. You agreed to pay me twelve dollars an hour. Now why am I doing it for two dollars an hour? Like that does how is that fair? Right. You know. Yeah, and it's like a slippery slope too because once you start doing that, you know. As we already talked about, it can just keep happening over and over again. And I really think that would put you closer to burnout, even though, you know, it's, you're relieving yourself a little bit just at once, but then you keep doing it over and over and you just get used to being paid less than, you know, your counterparts. So then your service starts to, you mm -hmm. know, degrade. And it's a really, it's a bad habit to get into because if you, you start getting into the, you know, it's no longer about my skills, abilities, services, and marketing value it's about the cash it's just less it's more about the dollar yeah you know and I, and i will tell you just i closed the deal today with a client and when i had my initial listing presentation and i i laid out all of what we were going to do marketing wise and what we were doing in terms of service and what we were doing in terms of value and everything and she was happy to pay it right you know yeah and it all and it went very very smooth closed on time you know everything went really really well and she was happy at closing she was just more she was just like she's like i wish we had more agents like you that presented the value mm -hmm. and didn't back down <clears throat> then you know because now she's buying a house in another state and they're like yeah they're not even nearly like organized as you guys are <laughs> she's just like we got no timelines <laughs> We got no, don't know what's going on. We signed papers and now we don't know what's happening. Uh -huh. And we're closing on Monday and I still don't know what time we're closing. You know, <laughs> what? You right. know so it's like, it's you, you, you give the perceived value and then you turn it into actionable value. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, they're going to appreciate you for what you bring to the table, not just what, what discounts or what check you can write. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's like yeah. anything you get paid is a direct result of the value you've provided. So if you do a shitty job, you're probably, I mean, I know it's a little bit different because you negotiate up front with the contracts, but you know, it's, it works the same way too. But you know, if you're going to say, Hey, you know, I'll do a 
3% job, well, then you're going to get, you're going to give a 3% job and that's just going to reek within your services. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just give the actual value that they're looking for, they're going to end off better. You're going to end off better and everyone's going to be a lot more satisfied and hell, you can even try new things because you have that financial backing and more importantly, the competence to back your actions. You know? I agree. Yeah. And like one of my sales presentations I did, uh, this is what we do. This is what the other guy does. Yeah. You know? And when they were done, they were just like, is it really? And I said, yeah. He goes, <laughs> But it, it was interesting because it was so much that he's just like, Ugh, well, I don't want to use the other guy. But I don't want to use you because you're too high. <laughs> and so he's like, I'll just try to fit, see if I can do it myself. Oh. You know? And so we're, and, and, but so he was just kind of like, I got to justify this in my mind. I got to be at a happy place to where I can mm -hmm. justify this in my mind. You got to give me a month. You just got to give me a month. I'll call you. I'll let you know one way or another. We're going to do it. Cause he's just like, He's like, because his biggest fear was, well, if you just, if you list it and it goes the right, the first day, you know, then what did you actually do to earn my business? But isn't that the goal? <laughs> it is the goal. And that's the funny part. The funny part is like you, you present the information so that it's so overwhelming that they have no choice but to use you or sell it themselves. Right. You know? Right. And, and, but, but the problem is, is that, you know, and so I told him, I was like, well, think of it this way if I hadn't told you what I was going to do to market your property mm -hmm. and it still sells the first day, at least you have the right expectations of what was going to happen. Whereas if I told you, you know, this is, this is the rate and then no actionable items and it's, and then it sells the, the same day, then you'd be disappointed. Cause then you're like, well, you weren't, you didn't do anything to sell my house anyways. Right. Well, and that's because I did a disservice. I didn't give you the actionable items that were going to happen to get your house sold. Mm -hmm. But if I just, if I just said, pay me, pay me, pay me with no actionable items, then of course you're going to feel disappointed, but you had the expectation of this is what was going to happen. Right. You know, like if, if I was at a basketball, you know, game and I said, these are the plays we're going to run. And then you won the game. Or if the dude just jumps out there and shoots a three, a three pointer and you're like, what the hell just happened? You know, those are two different things. Like one has the X. I think we might have lost you again, but. I would be happy that we won but b i'd be disappointed because you didn't listen right you know you have to repeat that because we just lost you you went blank and um paused <laughs> oh did i did you hear yeah. me at all well so where you were getting at oh, you were I like, lost, yeah you're pausing out too can you see me now do you hear me yeah. at least all right what you were yeah. saying was that like so you have a plan you have your game plan and you have all your plays and everyone's ready to go out there but then this random guy just shoots a three and you're sitting yeah. there like, what just happened? That's, that's where you got cut off. Yeah. So it's as a coach, you know, you're going to be disappointed that, you know, you've, you've had this plan. This was the play. This is what we were going to run. Mm -hmm. And then you just get some rogue basketball player. It's like, I got this and shoots a three throw, a three pointer. Right. Yeah. We still won, but I'd be disappointed because you didn't listen. Yeah. You know, there yeah. was, this was, there was no plan. You just ran out there and did it. And so, you know, it's the same thing as a seller. Like I want to know what the plan is. So I know what I'm paying for. Mm -hmm. you no. Know, whereas if I just, if, if I just have to cut you a check and I had no idea what the plan was and then I have to write you a check, then it's kind of like upsetting because I had no idea what was, what I'm even paying for. Right. You know, well, it kind of actually lends your, a hand to what, you know, your coaching business too, because when people come in, when agents come in to your business and you have a service package, you know, you could just say, well, well, this is going to be the end result and I'm not going to, I don't have a plan to get there. Or you can come in and say, nope, this is going to be week one. This is week two. This is week three. And you give them the expectations. The expectations are set and it's still the same end result. They're going to have more confidence in that process because they just, they know what's going on. Right. You know? Yeah. And you know, with, and with any good, you know, long-term plan, you got to have steps to get there. 
Right. It's not just, well, if you just put my face somewhere on your website, you know, <laughs> somehow I'm going to give you business. Right. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. I don't even know what I'm paying for there. You know, unless you have a brand that just exudes, you know, action. Like if I was, if I had something that said sponsored by Apple on my website, you know, that's, you know, the name alone could get it done. <laughs> sure. Uh, doesn't matter how crappy the product is. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. They work pretty hard for that though, through actionable items and yeah. value. Yeah. But they had, it, it took a long time to get to there where that just the brand alone carries its own weight. Whereas, yeah. you know, there's not a coach out there that I'm aware of that can just by their brand alone can grow your business. Even yeah. Buffini, you know, even having Buffini somewhere on your website wouldn't get it done. And he's very well known, Tom Ferry, any of those guys, like their name by themselves only means something within the real estate world. Outside of the real estate world, people are like, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Right. So that's not going to attract enough that there's not enough weight in that. So even they have to coach and train. Mm -hmm and show you the actionable items in order to get to where you need to get to. So. so speaking of actionable items, what is something that like, so I'm sure a lot of agents probably face this in their daily life. Um, they just want to get the deal done. They want to bring home the commission and they think, Hey, I guess I got to come up my, I have to cut my commission to at least get something, you know, what are some actionable items that people can take to not only stop that thought process, but just revert their current actions, just change what they're doing to actually get headed in the right direction. Well, I mean, the, the first one is just conceive what your worth is. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Oh, I lost you. Oh, this is so frustrating. <laughs> oh, you're back. So what do you mean by that? By conceive what your worth is? So conceiving your worth. So, you know, that there's value in what you have to say. There's uh -huh. value in, you know respecting yourself enough as a business person and as an agent to give value back to your client. Mm -hmm. you know, they're asking you, they already know what your rate is. So that should be a non-issue. Right. So, so now it's okay. So now that we're within $2,000 of getting the deal done. So what is it that you absolutely need versus want? Cause those are two different things mm -hmm. in order to move forward. Is it time? Is it money? Is it stress? Is it frustration? You know, do you have a goal? Like, do you want to get on with your life or do you want to hold on to $2,000? Do you want to, can you visualize yourself in your new home or do you want to stay in your old one? Right. At the end of the day, like, unless you're going into debt in order to sell your house, which that's a totally different conversation, mm -hmm. then what are, what are we talking about right now? Like, mm -hmm. let's just get it done and move on. Like at right. the end of the day, like our job is to get you an offer. We got one, you know, yeah. and not only that, but this is not, this is just the beginning. There are other things to negotiate. We still have the repairs. We still have the lender appraisal. You know, these are other, ro you know, roadblocks in the way of getting to the end result. So, you know, what is it that you want to do in taking the whole money thing off the table, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, there are circumstances where you absolutely, you know, you just get stuck in a position where, you know, you might have to negotiate some commissions just because there's, there's a circumstance that just has to, that it's, you, it can't be moved unless there's some, you know, motivation on both sides. Right. Um, but a lot of times, like, you know, there's variables, like there's some closing costs or whatever the case may be, where the buyer, if the buyer really wants to buy the house and they see the value in that you know, raise the price by a couple thousand dollars and let's just come to a happy medium to get it done mm -hmm. you know, rather than saying, Oh, well, we just need to work less. And I'm like, well, we, we, up until this point, we've used all of our resources to generate this offer. Right. You no. Know? Right. And so now we're saying now we're, now we're just going to do it for, you know, less money because just because, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the wrong attitude to have. I think really it just comes down to, you know, cons what is your self worth? You know, what is it that you have to say that, that adds value? Um, oh, I lost you again. Oh, I can hear you. Can you hear me?
<laughs> dilution for real. Ah, oh, man. There. Okay, you're back. Okay. <laughs> Man, I don't know what's going on, but we'll just finish it up. So Yeah, so just the last thing I wanted to say was, um, you know, I would say could see what your self-worth is. Yeah. Um, and then probably the second thing, probably one of the more important one it, ones are, is just role play this out with other agents in your office. Because this is yeah. not going to be the first time and it's not going to be the last time you're going to have this conversation about you know, why don't you just cut your commission so you, you know, so that we can get what we need to net, you know? And it's like, well, is it fair to me? You know, like I had this happen to me one time where we got the, basically the most perfect offer they could get, except for the price was a little bit low, you know, and they're saying, Hey, why don't you cut your commission so we can net what we need to net, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like, I had the conversation with them is like, is it fair to me that I've marketed that I've taken time out of my day. I've done open houses. I've driven on the country. I've done all these things for then for me to just discount my commission just so that you can get your house closed at the price that you, that, it, that you got, that you mm -hmm. want. Right. You know? And so, you know, there's different circumstances like that all the time that pop up and it's just like, you got to know what to say, how to present it in a way that you're not being, you know, being rude or, you know, trying to disrespect them or anything like that. But it's like, you know, we're a marketing firm. I mean, people don't understand that when you're in real estate, you're a marketing agency. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You right. market, you get property out there, you get, every, you know, get everybody to see it and that costs money, uh -huh. you know? And so, you know, basically what you're saying, what you're saying is I'm going to do all that stuff for, for even more for free because you do it all for free in the beginning. Right. Then you're going to do it even more for free. <laughs> or for less, uh -huh. you know, I don't know if you get more, if that's even possible, but no. Right. Free with consequences, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the reality of it is, is that, is that you've got to be able to have tough adult consequence conversations mm -hmm. in order to achieve the result that you want. You know, it's, you know, and it comes back to having the conversation and, and, and knowing what you're worth. You know, if you're worth it to, for, for every time some, you know, bump in the road comes up, you just give away money, then you can be the giveaway money client <laughs> and you're going to be broke. Right. You can be the giveaway broke client too, or the broke agent. Uh -huh. you know, we change our name to broke agent and then you know, call <laughs> do all the things you're not supposed to do. Yeah, all the things you're not supposed to do. And then <laughs> They broke, you know? <laughs> cool, man. Well, I'm sure this is obviously probably something that you cover in your training program. Why don't you give people a little bit more insight onto what that looks like, how they can get a hold of you? Yeah. So um, if you want to get a hold of me, you can PM me on Facebook at uh, JP's real estate page. You can text me directly, 307 772 1184. You can email me at james.fluellen.com or you can reach me on Twitter at Wild Homes. So all of those places, I'm also an, in, um, if you really can't find me anywhere, just Google JP Fluellen. I think I'm like one of three in the whole United States of America. So <laughs> That's highly hard to expect. You have no excuse not to find me. So you can set up a 30 minute coaching call with me for free. And uh, that's it. Awesome guys. And if you want to reach out to me, um, you can just ping me on this page on success agents. Uh, it's facebook.com slash agents automated. Um, you can also private message me just Chris Parsons. I think it's CK Parsons. Um, email Chris at I N S Y N Q K. And we'll see you next week for another episode of success agents. Awesome. See you later, see you later man. <laughs>